Hey everyone, we are here with a Titan XP, the actual Titan XP with the lowercase p, as in the brand new one, $1,200 video card. This was sent to us on loan by a reader, Grant, thank you for sending that over. And for him, we are going to be converting this into a hybrid card, so that'll give us some extra clock, headroom, stabilize things a bit, and we'll have a full review and all that stuff online as well, but uh, this is going to be a teardown. So part one, we're taking it apart, looking at the PCB, and we'll be talking about the components on it a little bit. And then part two, building it up, which will be partly a guide for a hybrid mod. Uh, part three will be the results on how it has improved with the liquid cooling kit. So before we get into that, this is brought to you by iFixit.com. You can use code GAMERSNEXUS to get $5 off of any toolkit purchase from iFixit. We have a few other things on the table I'll be using today, like this uh, magnetic project mat, very useful for putting the screws out as you remove them from the card so that you don't lose where they go because they are many different sizes with these Titan and 1080 class cards. That's just how Nvidia decided to do it. Uh, so we'll be using that. Let's get started with this. This thing, first of all, uh, this is a reference design. There are only reference designs for these Titan XP cards, as far as we know right now anyway. And things are pretty standard from the outside. There's a bit of red tinting on the PCB. I suppose that's different. But otherwise, uh, no DVI, so that simplifies the teardown a bit. We won't need to use the three point something millimeter uh, hex to remove that. And the rest is going to be uh, 1.5 and two millimeter uh, tools to remove everything. So Allen keys, Phillips heads, stuff like that. Nothing too crazy, but specific enough that you would need to make sure you have the stuff before you start because uh, NVIDIA doesn't use just Phillips for everything. They, they put a whole bunch of Allen keys on here. So we're gonna start with removing the back plate. And once we get the back plate off, we can start pulling off the cooler and then we can take apart the top side of the cooler with that completely separated from the rest. Uh, so I'm gonna grab a small Phillips head to start with to remove these tiny screws on the back side, and then we will go from there. Okay, so back plate is split into two pieces for die casting reasons. So they cast two different pieces and split them. And that means we can remove this one now. This is not really that functional of a plate. You can see there's actually one spot where there's thermal thermal contact between a pad, uh, but otherwise it's just for looks, maybe a little bit of structural support. It's not even really contacting anything on the card. So this is primarily a looks thing. So we've removed that. That was just a few of those Phillips screws. Once we get in there, uh, we now have some of these hex heads and these are actually kind of annoying to remove. So we'll save those for a minute later from now, get the rest of these Phillips out. And these, you need to be really careful with when putting them back in because, I'll put this in that section, because when you're putting these screws back in, if you go one tick past where they feel pretty secure, they will snap as we've learned from experience. So be careful about that because uh, you're, you're not gonna have an easy time finding replacements if you need them. Back plate. Okay, so now we just have the big screws that are connected to the expansion, the cover, the expansion slot. Pull those. Okay, so those are the two big ones. They hook through the back plate, through these hooks on the plate, and then into the front side of the cooler. And now, we can start removing the tiny ones and then the four big spring tensioned ones will do last. So that is a size four, four millimeter it looks like. So all these do is hook into the bottom side of the cooler on the, uh, well the cooler and the shroud. This connects to the heat sink directly. These connect to the shroud and the base plate. And the smaller Phillips heads we took out of them are strictly for the back plate. They serve no other purpose. 
So once we've gotten these out, plus the four that secure the heatsink proper with the vapor chamber, we'll be able to separate the cooler and the shroud from the PCB, the GPU, the stuff we care about. And is that all of them? That, that's all of them. So how many screws is that? 10, 12, 14. So 14 of those, uh, four millimeters. And then we've got another two over here. So 16 total times two ish, more or less. You're, you're at about 30 screws just to get the back plate and the card separated. And we need to do these four now. So grab a big Phillips. I like to cover, I, I sort of partly remove these and then I cover them. That way they don't go flying because they will, uh, they will fly out once you're down to one or two of these. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and remove this uh, cover plate back here. These are all over here. Now we should be able to separate the card. I like to do this with the PCB down to keep as many thermal pads where I want them as possible. So here we go. This looks pretty similar to the 1080 Ti Founders Edition PCB and cooler for that matter. So this looks like a nickel plated copper uh, cold plate. So nickel plated and that's making direct contact with the GPU. This is the biggest Pascal GPU that's out there right now for consumers anyway. VRAM contact pads. So these are your thermal pads for the VRAM modules. And this time, unlike the 1080 Ti's, we actually have 12. So four, eight, 12. Normally this one right here is missing for the 1080 Ti's, but it's actually present on this because we have 12 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory. And then in terms of everything else, this is your fan header down here. This is your power for the LED. So that powers this GeForce GTX LED. And then for the FETs and things like that, we still have Fairchild FETs. Are they the same ones? D A H zero. Okay, so I looked it up. Some of these parts are a bit different than on the 1080 Ti Founders Edition PCB. We will look into having the board analyzed separately. One part that is definitely the same, the E6930 uh, FETs for the memory VRM up here at the top of the board, which you can see our 1080 Ti Founders Edition PCB analysis to learn more about those. And now we're just going to clean off the GPU proper to get it prepped for the hybrid mod, which will be the build up process. And there is the reveal of GP 102. Uh, and for those who care, it's GP 102 450. And we're in A1 rev, which means it is probably the first production ready, consumer ready rev of the GPU, of the silicon. Okay, so there's the GPU. We've got the memory from Micron as expected, 11 gigabit per second capable, and uh, the FETs we'll look at separately. Fan connector, power connector, a couple shunts on the board. You can see one right here, one up here, and those are uh, five milliohm shunts, one down here as well. If you wanted to do a shunt mod, you could short and uh, and try and get some extra power delivery. Backside, nothing special really. Small crappy thermal pad here for contact with the, uh, the back plate. But otherwise, that's it. So we're in a position now where we can uh, start building it up as the hybrid mod and get things going for Grant so that he can use this for machine learning and things like that. Check back shortly for part two where we'll do the build up. If you haven't seen those before, this will show you how to do it on your own. And it applies for the 1080 Ti, 1080 
Even the some of the reference AMD cards, though the steps are a little different, but the same idea. So uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus to help us out directly. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to grab shirts or use coupon code GamersNexus for $5 off at iFixit.com. And we'll see you all next time.